Hello there, and as usual, I'm Aaron from Lifestay and Gamers, and welcome. So today we're back in the survival world, not to play survival this time, but to honour one of your requests. That's been on the back of my mind for quite some time now. Now you may remember this ship, before we all started constructing and making the mega ship, I had an original idea for the actual ship itself in my head. And I thought I'd actually honour the idea and complete it and show you how I expected the ship to look when it was fully built. So this is just the outer shell, me and Tazu started working on the hangar and some of the areas in the inside. And I will show you in a second. Now remember this ship got transferred into the higgledy piggledy mess that we're currently rolling with in survival. But let's see what I can do with it. So now I've taken the time to actually build this ship up to its original sort of configuration that I had in my mind at the time. This is what it looks like. So as you can see, we've got a quite a long sort of ship with a lot of turrets and weapons on. Now the priority of this ship in our survival was to be able to transport all the supplies and act as a mobile base as we travel through space. So at the front we've got the large hangar to store all our small ships, we've got some turrets, some different sorts of weapons in different areas, I've got turrets over the front to act as a massive battery of fire for anyone who's coming head on with us, we've also got a deck gun right on the top as well as these little talon turrets and I've used all the mods that were available to us in our survival so you're not going to see anything too different. And in the survival series it also talks about building a large sort of oil tanker bridge and this is exactly what I built here you've got a lot of view you've got a lot of turrets and you can use it as a platform for the bigger turrets as well so you can really get that side sort of barrage going down on whatever you need it to go for let's have a look around the back so around the back I took a lot of inspiration from another ship I built a while ago with these smaller engine cells you can see I've just detailed them with some sort of like patterns of curves and I've tried not to make anything too squared I've tried to round all the corners and make it really sort of smooth to the eye to actually look at it's almost a little bit robotic as well in function you can see how some of the armors actually been very pointed and stylized at different areas we've got a large turret at the back in a darker tone to blend in with the rest of the ship and we've got two talons on the rear thrusters and it's got quite an engine power pack as you can see from looking down the back it's quite a big ship but that's exactly what you're going to need to actually travel through space efficiently producing refining and building as you go now let's get inside so now let's head inside we're going to use one of the front entrances and one thing that i did learn from the survival series was that you wanted lots of access points around the ship and that's what i've tried to do I've got lots of quick access points to key areas and cut throughs as well because it's nothing worse and more tedious than having to go around some long passages to actually get to the part you want of the ship so this is the hangar bay itself you can see we've got two large hangars on either side it's quite misleading the ship looks a little bit smaller on the outside but we've still got quite a reasonable amount of armor as well so the ships can park along here and we've also got connectors that will pop out if we wish so we can also access this floor and you can see where the ships would come in through so they're going to come in through this large hangar bay below and having a hangar bay on the bottom means that we don't have to have any ugly sort of hangar sticking out the side or an opening that leads to things just flying straight into your hangar doors this is a lot smoother and fits in with the ship's design so let's actually head into the hull now so this first area is a little bit of an airlock and one of the notices that I actually paid quite a bit of attention to in the survival was that people just wanted to dump things in an area and in this airlock there's loads of cargo containers so people can just dump something from the ship, run back out, fill it back up and there is connector points around so you can connect your ship directly. So now we're heading into the processing lounge, we're actually walking on a massive number of refineries and assemblers that are all hooked up and processing. I've got power packs and productivity and efficiency timers to give us them little bonuses. You'll also notice these little screens up here that I've not had time to wire up, but these would actually program the different ore resources that you'd have in them refineries. So you get a quick glance, you could actually see what's going on. Now we proceed to the back of the ship, we're moving through the oxygen storage area as well as the gravity. So you can see these oxygen storage and these vents to produce that sort of oxygen as well and we head through to the rear part of the ship. We're actually going under the lower area and there's a glass sort of walkway here so you can see exactly what's going on as you're cutting through. Just a little bit of a cool feature I put in there. Now moving into this area, this is where the crowd chambers are and the med bay is at the back of the, she the ship, deep within the hull. And if we continue out that back door, we'll go to the rear exit. But we're not gonna go there just yet. We're gonna head up a floor 
and if we take a right we'll head actually into the engine bays but we'll go back up there in a minute I'm going to show you this area first. So this area leads through to a secondary sort of jump drive room with gyroscopes. So you can see there's two jump drives on both sides of the ship. And if we head up into this area, we've got an AFK room. A room that I thought would be quite important in survival. You can just come in here and go AFK, come back after you've had your sandwich or whatever you're doing, and get back building within the scenario. Here's another one of the cut-throughs to one of the other areas. So you can just see if I access this little sage door, I can drop down back into one of the areas so we're back in the oxygen room in this case so we'll head back through this area and go upstairs now we're heading back through the cryo room and we head up one floor we go into the engine room so we can see the engines at work up here and if we open this door we're actually heading now into the upper floors so this floor is sort of two stages up here we actually have the bridge of the ship and the bridge is quite simple i've not got too much lighting up here because i don't really attract too much attention once again another cut through to save time if we're traveling through the ship and we'll go down to the sort of rear area now where there's a crew sort of quarters as well as you can see we've got a connector up there that we can access as well so when we come into this area, you'll notice that there is some red lights showing that the connector is in operation to warn the players. We've got two small cabins as well in here. We've got a sage desk as well as a bed. And if we hover through this area, we have the connector room so you can connect outside manually. We press that button and it extends out the piston so we can connect ships up without them even having to come inside as well. I thought that was pretty interesting. Let's continue back outside. So the next thing I'd like to show you with this ship are its weapon systems. So first off, we have the small Talon anti-fighter turrets, and we've also got the much larger sort of main battleship gun on the front. That requires a little bit of a human touch, but it's extremely dangerous as well. Now over here, we actually have some of the smaller turrets, and I'm not too sure how powerful or how dangerous this will be, but I've added this one on the side for a little bit more firepower. We'll throw a Henry up, and we'll see exactly what happens. So the laser talent turrets look like they've been engaging, and they're engaging quite rapidly, picking off his key sort of components. Not much, not too much of an awesome sound effect though. Actually, there's no sound effect at all. You can see how most of the turrets are actually hitting the target. Some are missing, some are missing around. It looks so cool, them laser sort of pulses as they're firing. Anyway, we'll turn that off and we'll access the main cannons. So if we drop down in here and we select the main cockpit, we turn them bad boys off. So they stop firing and we access our main battleship turret you can see how awesome they are when they fire and we can also remote control them if we wish so you can see i'll aim this cannon at home it's a very slow sort of traverse rate so if i just fire one of them for instance you can see it come out at the end and we'll switch back to the other perspective and fire some more from this so let them reload and then we can fire them again the reload rate's a little bit slow on the bigger cannons but the damage that they can do is by far worth it and let's finish this off by jumping out of this area anyway guys i'd like to thank you guys for watching and hopefully it's shown you what that ship could have become after a little bit of editing and i will see you next time